This is the most powerful handheld electric water gun ever made. A project that started as something seemingly simple, but little did I know that it would end up taking me over a year of designing, building and testing to finally get to this point. So what exactly makes this water gun so powerful? And is it powerful enough to break the current world record? To answer those questions we need to go back in time a bit, because this project started a little over a year ago after I built this water gun, which was based on the new generation electric water guns which can shoot small bursts of water up to about 30 feet. And although my design at the time came pretty close, I still wondered if it was possible to create a water gun so powerful that it, that it would make all other water guns look like baby toys. And let me tell you, I did. But to get there, I had to push the boundaries of what defines a water gun. And I may have even stretched those boundaries a bit. So the question is, will it still count as a water gun? That's something I'll leave up to you to decide. Let's start by clarifying what exactly defines a water gun. So I asked ChatGPT and it came up with the following answer. A water gun is usually defined by a few core features. Water supply. It must store water and spray it under pressure, either from a tank or a reservoir. Propulsion. Water guns often use manual pressure, air pressure, or a pump mechanism to spray water. Purpose. It's designed to spray water for fun, typically in outdoor games or water fights. Speed and range. The speed of the water spray and its range are important performance specs. Design. Water guns are usually lightweight, easy to handle, and ergonomically designed for comfortable use. Safety. Unlike firearms, water guns are meant for innocent, playful interactions, making them popular as toys. And just by reading these design specs, it quickly became clear to me that this was definitely not going to be a standard project and was probably going to need a lot of custom-made parts. And that started right away with the air tank and the compressor. Because I didn't want any loose components and wanted everything to fit in a handheld design, so the space for each part was limited. To maximize the air tank size I used PVC pipe because it's easily available in a lot of different sizes and it's affordable too. But it also has its drawbacks, which I'll get back to in a minute. To seal both ends of the pipe I designed some custom aluminum fittings and had them machined by PCBWay. By placing a threaded rod in the center, the two fittings with an o-ring around them can be tightened to make the pipe airtight on both sides. In the front fitting I added the threaded hole for a small solenoid valve, so we can release all the air from the tank at once with the push of a button. To compress the air, I borrowed Officer Jet Jake's portable mini compressor and stripped away all unnecessary components like the casing and the battery. My only concern is that the PVC pipe is rated for only 3 bars max, while the compressor can easily pump up to 10 bars. And I'm sure they've implemented a safety factor in the PVC pipe, but I have no idea how much. So will the PVC pipe hold or will it explode? It scared me. For a moment I thought the pipe burst, but it seemed like it was just the o-ring that popped out. That could have been worse. To keep the o-ring in place next time, I ground an inner chamber in the pipe as a kind of chamber to keep the o-ring in place. Nah, I'm still a bit uneasy, but the PVC pipe seems to hold. Let's leave it pressurized for a while and move on to what this project is truly about. Because to make this water gun more powerful than any other, we need to solve a problem that limits the range of all other water guns. As soon as the water exits any water gun nozzle, it encounters air resistance, which causes the stream to break apart quickly. So if we want to increase the shooting distance from 30 feet to let's say 50 feet, we need a way to keep the water to stick together after it leaves the nozzle. And that's precisely where this part comes in. And inside here, there's so much going on that you could practically call it the mini factory. If we cut open the aluminum block so we can take a look inside, we see this. And it might look complex, but if we go through it step by step, you'll see it's actually quite simple. And no, this isn't an animation of the block's cross-section. This is a real CNC machine version. 
because it's so easy to order from PCBWay.com, I just couldn't resist. And it's affordable too. Let me show you what I mean. These are all the parts CNC machines from aluminum by PCBWay for this project. And I'll let you take a guess what it all cost. And these parts may seem small, but as you can see, they're really complex. Ready? Only $241 for all of this, and that includes taxes and express shipping. I had these parts delivered in only 6 days after ordering, and as always, everything fit together like a puzzle. So really, what are you waiting for? Check out the link in the video description to see what PCBWay can do for your projects. Special thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Inside the block there are two cylindrical valves. Depending on the cylinder's positions, the space between them can be open or close. To avoid manually handling each shot, I added two small gear DC motors to operate the valves and I used two laser cut acrylic end stops to keep the valves aligned without the use of any sensors or encoders. With both valves closed, the space between them can be filled with water. To do that, there's a small pump that draws water from the reservoir around the barrel and pumps it into the block from below to fill the empty space between the two valves. Any excess water can circulate back to the reservoir. And circulating the water for a few seconds will also make sure all air bubbles are gone. Something that's important for how I'm planning to make the water stick together. Because to make the water stick together, we're going to do something that pushes the definition of a water gun. And this may even make this whole project no longer count as a water gun. Because my idea is to place thermoelectric cooling elements on both sides of the aluminum block to freeze the water into real ice pellets. Since the Pelche effect creates a temperature difference of about 60 degrees between the two sides of a cooling element, it's essential to keep the temperatures of the warm side as low as possible to get the cold side of each element below freezing temperature. To do so I added a heat sink and a fan on each hot side to get rid of the heat as fast and efficient as possible. But, with the water now freezing inside the aluminum block, we run into a new problem. Because water expands when it freezes, and since it's already sealed in, the pellets get stuck inside the block. And the only way I could think of to solve this was to include two heating elements, which are normally used in a 3D printer. So we can warm the block slightly after freezing, to, to create a thin film of water around the pellet. However, this means that there is only a small window in which the trigger must be pulled before the ice pellet completely melts. But I came up with a simple yet brilliant solution for that, which we'll get to in a minute. For the body of the gun, I followed the design specs suggested by ChatGPT. Lightweight, comfortable and ergonomic. And, like most of my other projects, somewhat aesthetically pleasing. Let's see if everything fits so far. To accelerate our ice pellet after firing, we'll use this aluminum tube. And generally speaking, the longer the barrel, the higher the projectile speed. Although it also depends a little on the volume of the air tank. Finally, we need to add and connect all the electrical components before we can see what damage this thing can actually do. One of those features is the LED strips on each side of the gun, which can show us the progress of each cycle. 
so now we know exactly when the gun is ready to fire. But before pulling the trigger, I'm gonna ask you again. Does this still count as a water gun? Or what category does this engineering filtration fall into? I'm very curious of what you think. Let me know in the comments below. Time to see what damage this thing can do. Oh, cool. 